What if I told you that in under 10 minutes, completely free, you could make your very first app? So you might have been thinking about making an app for a while, but every time you look it up, you'll notice you have to learn a high level programming language and download a really big SDK. It seems just too daunting and it puts you off. In this video, I'm gonna show you a way to do it with minimal coding knowledge, completely free and in under 10 minutes. What we'll be using is Adobe PhoneGap Build. Instead of installing complicated software on your computer to build the app, you're gonna send it off to the cloud where all of the hard work is done for you. We're gonna make our app just like a website, which means using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Although in this video, you don't need to know any of those. The beauty of PhoneGap Build is that from one set of source files, you can upload to the cloud and have iOS, Android, and Windows Phone apps. Let's jump straight in. The very first step we're gonna do is to create an empty folder and call it something. I'm just gonna call mine app for now because I haven't decided what type of app I'll be, but you wanna make sure this is completely empty and it's not cluttered with any other files. Next, you're gonna follow the link in the description and download Notepad++. If you already have Dreamweaver or another text editor, you can use that instead. Just as long as you've got something that highlights code, because that will help things a great deal. Let's head over to PhoneGap Build and click the Get Started button to create our account. We're gonna go for a free plan. You can upgrade later on if you feel like this is something you really wanna work with. At this point, you can sign in with any of your favorite options and it should take you through to the starting screen. After we've made our account, it should take us to this screen and we have it on private and the button we're gonna use eventually is upload a zip file. Time to start creating the files that we need for our basic app. I'll have this link in the description, but this is our basic configuration file. We always include this with our other files and we do so because it includes all the metadata, such as the author name, the name of the app, the version, and this is also where you put in all your plugin settings and things like that. What we're gonna do is scroll down on this page and we're gonna copy and paste everything from example config XML and we're gonna put that into our text editor. By default in Notepad++, we have an empty document, so we're just gonna paste this in and we're not gonna change anything yet. We're gonna make sure we save it in the correct format. Very important to get the name for this file exactly right and that is config.xml. We can now hit save. We'll come to our app folder and we can see we have our first file ready to go. Let's come back to the editor and this is a bit where if you want to, you can change some of these parameters here. So the name I'm gonna put teaching tech test. For now, I'm not gonna bother changing any of these other things except for the author, which I'm gonna to change to teaching tech. You can update them to however you want. Let's hit the new file button and make our second and last file that we need to make the most basic app possible. PhoneGap Build is able to publish your app to multiple platforms because you make it as a series of HTML files. That means just making it like it was a website. After you're done, you upload it to the cloud and it will turn it into an actual app using the web view interface. And then you'll have an icon and it'll open up on the user's tablet or phone exactly like a normal app would. Therefore, in our basic example, we need to have a HTML page. This page is linked into the description and what we're gonna do is scroll down and take their example. This is the most basic HTML page possible. We're gonna copy that, come over to our editor, paste it into our second new document. We're gonna come up and save this file as well. This one needs to be called index.html. Back in our folder, we can see that we have our two minimal documents. Let's do a little bit of editing of the index.html file. We have the basic structure of our HTML. So we have the head section, which is where you normally put the links to other important documents and things like scripts to load the fancy functions of your app. And then we have the body, which is what the user sees on their screen. The template we've used has a heading and then a paragraph. The beauty of PhoneGap Build is that because everything is run as a website, you can preview your app as you're building it just in your browser on your computer. We're gonna double click on index.html and it will open up in a window and this is exactly what the user is gonna see at this stage when they open your app. To make this more realistic to a phone or tablet scenario, we can not maximize the window and then drag the sides to match the aspect ratio of a phone screen or a tablet if that's what you're aiming for. We're gonna leave this open and every time we make a change, we can come back and refresh it. So let's head back to Notepad++ and change something here.
Okay, we've made some very minor changes. We can hit save and then come back to our window and hit refresh. And you can see that it's updated here. Just to make our app somewhat interactive, even though we're going for the bare minimum, we're gonna add in a button. Okay, let's save this and refresh the page. When we click the button, we have a notification that comes up. I think this is very simple, but it's enough to have a proof of concept. So let's upload to PhoneGap Build and see if it works. I'm back in my folder and what I'm gonna do is select both of those files. I'm gonna right click them. I'm gonna say send to zip folder. We need a zip file every time we upload. The name of this doesn't matter at all. If you're gonna store all of your different versions, maybe you'd like to name them something along those lines. For me, I'm just gonna hit number one, save it, and we're ready to come back to PhoneGap build and upload. I'm gonna to go to upload a zip file, and then click our zip file and hit open. Okay, you can see that it is working because immediately it has read our XML file and put in the things that we changed there. At this point, we can come over and click ready to build. It generally only takes less than a minute to get it done. So already we can see iOS is built, Windows Phone is built, and Android is pending. Okay, we can ignore all of these sections where it says no key selected. That's something to worry about for later on if you're gonna publish it to the App Store or Google Play. It just means it's gonna be in debug mode at this stage. I think it's time to use a QR scanner on my phone and download the app and see if we can get it to come up. Here's a screen grab from my phone. We managed to scan the QR code very successfully and the link came up. I copy and pasted that into a browser came up asking me if I wanted to download, which I did, clicked install, and the app is on the phone. I've dragged the icon to the home screen, and when I click it, it opens as we expect. I tap on the button, and my alert comes up, and my app is 100%. Well, technically, we have our app, but let's add one more step just to make it a little bit nicer. We're gonna add our own app icon instead of using the default phone gap build one. What I've done is create a square canvas, 144 by 144 pixel image in Photoshop. And how you do it is pretty much up to you. I'd like to leave the rounded corners because that works well with many operating systems. When I save it, it's very important to save it for web and make sure the file type is PNG. So let's do that. And for now, I'm just gonna call it icon. Come back to our folder, you can see we have three files now. I'm gonna quickly come into my config XML file. I'm gonna change it to version 002. Okay, check the description for this link, but it is a guide to creating your own icons. We're gonna do the absolute minimum we can at this point, and that is to copy their one line configuration and put it in our config XML file. We're gonna come at the bottom before the close widget tag and we don't have a resources folder. So we're just gonna delete this and therefore it points directly to source equals icon.png. Gonna save this file, come back to our app folder. I like to delete the old one just so I don't get confused, but that's up to you. Select our three files now because of our new PNG and we're gonna send it to a zipped folder once more. This is version 002. We can now come back to PhoneGap build and once again come to update code, use our file and upload. Our Android build is complete so I'm going to go back to my phone and download the latest version of the app. Back to the screen record of my mobile phone. A little tip here, if you paste it into your browser, you can just refresh the page because it will be the same link. It will then prompt you to download it again, which you will do, and then you will install, which will do it over the top of the old one. If you're developing an app and doing this over and over, you'll have many files to delete out of your download folder. If we come back to the home screen, we'll see our app icon has updated exactly how we wanted. The app still opens and functions like it did before because we didn't change anything there. 
Well, we do have an app and it is pretty simple, but we did do it in under 10 minutes and we didn't spend a cent. In the next video, we're going to step it up by introducing jQuery Mobile, which is a free library to give us apps that actually look like apps. That means fitting the mobile screen properly and having nice automatic animations as we go between the various pages. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.